let's um let's talk about Mr. Vince Vora. Now Vince has a website called tradingwins.com and Vince has been around for a while. Um he's the head trader at tradingwins.com with over 3 decades of trading experience. Now Vince specializes in technical analysis and price action trading systems. And that's super interesting because we had a lot of guys yesterday asking about uh, price action and things like that. And when we were doing the technical analysis yesterday, everybody was really into it. Vince is dedicated to teaching and mentoring traders to improve their skills. And he offers a wide range of trading systems suitable for various market conditions and instruments, including stocks, options, futures, and Forex. Now that part's exciting too, because yesterday we were really leaning on the option side. And today we're talking to a guy who's going to do just about everything. Ladies and gentlemen from tradingwinds.com, Mr. Vince Vora. Vince, how are you today? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? I'm doing very well. I, I, we do appreciate you coming along today and, and joining us, and we're, we're really looking forward to your, to your talk today. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Uh, is it okay if I open my camera? or? Yeah, oh, yeah, please, please do. want to say hi to everyone? Good morning. No, we'll say hi to you, too. Great. I actually forgot my mind wasn't on you. You're better looking <laughs> than I am. But Oh, wow, look at all the screens back there. <laughs> look, look at that setup. Wow. <laughs> Uh, thanks awesome. again for, for organizing this. It's been a great event, and, and I'm looking forward to uh, the next hour. Again. Yeah, awesome. Hey, listen, so what we'll do is we'll turn our cameras off. We'll mute ourselves. We'll give you screen share, okay. uh, you know, and you, you run the show whatever way you want to. If you need us, just give us a little holler, and we'll jump in and save you if something goes wrong technically. Perfect. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. No problem. It. Thanks, Vince. Right. Let me share my screen. Okay. Get my window set up here. <clears throat> Excellent. Uh, I'm just going to open my chat so I can see if there's any questions along the way. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for for taking time uh, out of your day to to be with us. I really do appreciate it. I know you've seen uh, you've had the opportunity to see a number of great speakers throughout the week. Some great materials. I've had the pleasure of working with many of them. Uh, all, all really really great people. Um, today, what I want to talk to you about is my victory method. I created this, I believe it was late 2019. It was just before the uh, the pandemic hit uh, or started. Um, and it's based solely on technical analysis. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about technical analysis. I'll show you a, a number of, of, of tips and tricks you can use, whether you use this indicator or not. Technical analysis, there's so much to learn. I'm going to go through as much as I can in the next hour. Don't worry about the slides. I literally only have two more. One is just to introduce myself again. I'm Vince Fora from Trading Winds. Been doing this well over three decades now. Um, most of, I'd say the past eight, nine years has been focused on uh, teaching people to do this. Um, prior to that, I uh, was managing money and, and creating systems. Uh, here's my quick disclaimer. All I'm going to say is you know, this, this business is, is tough. It is difficult. You have to find a method that works for you. So please don't go out and trade with real money until you're completely comfortable with the system you're using. Okay. So the rest of the presentation, I'm going to use my live charts here. This is my trading view platform. And what you see on here, these, um, uh, these buy and sell signals, uh, and, and this blue line, this is the victory system. I will tell you that over, you know, 30 plus years that I've been doing this, uh, what I realized very early on is that we as traders, you, usually we're the ones that overcomplicate this. We make trading a lot more than it, it, it has to be, a lot more difficult than it, than it has to be. So my whole goal with this system was to simplify it as much as possible. I used to trade with a ton of different indicators, look at all sorts of different things, I've whittled it down to two things, one indicator, one oscillator. That's the only thing behind this algorithm, but it works extremely consistently. And I hope to show you that over the next hour. Um, I'll tell you a bit about what these signals mean, and then uh, we're going to get into many, many examples. So I would encourage you, if you have a symbol that you want to look at, that you're, you're currently trading or thinking of trading and you want to see how the victory system would have performed, by all means, type it into the chat and I'll try to get to as many as we can. Like I said, it's based solely on technical analysis. It works on any market, whether it's equities, futures, Forex, uh, even crypto, you name it. 
all sorts of different um, exchanges. It, and anything you can chart, basically, it will work on. But just so you know, uh, just so you have a point of reference, uh, before we launched this, we not only tested it in, in U.S. markets, we, we tested it in Canada, Australia, over in India, U.K., uh, Hong Kong, so all over the place, South America. Uh, so it, it, it works just as well across the board. So whether you're a day trader and trade a one-minute, three-minute chart, whether you're more of a swing trader like I am, trading the daily, weekly, or an investor using the monthly, you can use this as well. All right, let's talk about the victory system. So you're going to see, um, and maybe I should expand this a little so you can see. So you'll see these buy entries, and then you'll see what we call a re-entry, right? There's a buy and a re-entry. And the only difference there is that on the re-entry, we're already in the trade. That's why we name it a re-entry. If you miss the initial entry, you have another opportunity to get in. And usually it's several throughout a, a, a consistent trend. Um, and once, once we open a trade, once you get that buy signal, you'll notice that every single bar, price bar, is colored green. That is, was done for a reason, to keep you disciplined and help you re remain in the trade for the life of that trade. A lot of times, and especially for newer traders, when you get in, you know, it, it could start going your way. You get one or two green bars. And then as soon as you get one or two red bars, it could scare you out of that trade, right? It, it really makes you second guess yourself. You're wondering, am I in the right trade? Am I about to give back my profits? And usually jump, jump out only to see that stock continue going higher. So to avoid that, we decided to keep all the candles in the same color until we get an exit. And an exit you know, it could be an actual exit flag that appears, or it could be a sell that, that, that appears here. Now, one thing I want to stress is that the intent here is not to take every single symbol. In other words, I don't want you to buy whenever it says buy and sell whenever it says sell, um, meaning go short when it says sell. Um, I'm going to teach you the ones you want to take versus the ones you're not, you don't. And, and the reason for that is, because of the programming, we could not, um, we cannot remove uh, most of the bad signals uh, without also removing some of the good. Okay, so we left them in there, and I'm going to teach you exactly which ones to take and which ones you do not want to take. But whenever there is a change in color, meaning if I got in here long, whether it was on the buy or on the reentry, if it turns either red or yellow, you sell the full position, you're out of there. It doesn't mean you transition to go short. It just means you exit your, your position. Whenever you see a yellow there, it could remain yellow for several bars. That means you should not be in the market at that time, okay? Stay on the sidelines until we get another uh, signal, long or short. So this is the monthly chart of the Qs of the uh, NASDAQ 100. And the reason why I'm showing you the, the monthly is even if you're not a longer term investor, you can use the monthly for a, a guide uh, of the overall direction of that market. Okay. So when you know, you, you're in a long trade on the monthly, it doesn't mean you have to trade the monthly. You can go down to the weekly or the daily and then pick off the, the trades that are in that direction, right? If we're in a bull market, you want to only concentrate on longs. If we're in a bear market, you want to concentrate on shorts, okay? The other thing that we have here is this blue line. What is that? That is the 20 period simple moving average. Not exponential, not weighted. We, we tested all of them. The 20 period simple moving average works best, okay? Um, and what we use that for is to judge momentum. So here's, here's the core of the system. We want to trade with trend and momentum on our side, okay? When you're trading with trend and momentum on your side, more than half the battle is won even before you get into the trade. That is what puts the odds in your favor for success, meaning if you follow what I'm going to give you and you trade only when trend and momentum are on your side, 
not only will you have more winners than losers, but your winners will be bigger than your losers. With that kind of math, it's, it's really difficult to lose. So how, how, how do we tell? Well, you know, a, a trend sometimes is very easy to spot. Uh, you know, first of all, if, if you're going from bottom right of the screen to, to the top right, uh, or sorry, bottom left to the top right, it, it's kind of easy to tell that we're in a bull trend, right? But you can also use the pivots, right? The, the turning points. So here's a pivot low, here's a pivot high, here's a pivot low, pivot high, pivot low, etc. right? Markets go in a zigzag pattern. But generally, you know, it, it, it's going higher. So let me just draw this out for you. If, if you make a move, pull back, make another move, pull back, make another move. These turning points are what we call the pivots. So if you compare one low pivot to, an, to another, right, here, and you can say that this one is higher than this one, then you have higher lows, right? And if you're comparing the high pivots one to the other, and you can say that this one is higher than that one, then you have higher highs. So whenever you have higher highs and higher lows, you know you're in, in a bull phase and vice versa is true for, for a, a downtrend, right? Um, so that's how you know you have trend on your side. How do you know you have momentum? Well, the 20 period moving average. And what I'm referring to specifically is the slope on that 20. So that 20 can be completely flat it can be slightly higher, okay, or it can be, it can have a significant slope higher, okay, the, the higher the degree of slope, the more momentum there is on that move. And that's what you want to look for. You want to look for setups that are not only close to the 20, but have a high degree of slope in the direction that you plan to trade. Okay, and we can use many examples. I'll use TLT. Let me see. Oh, there's a number of symbols now in the chat. I'll, I'll use some of those in a second. But ha have a look at, at TLT here. The you know bond market over the last year has been insane, right? With bond yields going higher. So have a look at TLT here, uh, the ETF for the 20-year treasury, right? It's, it's been dropping hard, actual bond prices here. Um, so look at the 20 and look at the slope lower. That is a very, very significant slope downward, okay? Generally, what I consider significant is about a 45 degree angle. So if I'm, I'm looking at, a, at a, a slope higher, it's about like this, right? Now, it doesn't matter the exact degree of slope, doesn't matter, you just need some slope, but the higher the degree of slope, the better. You know, so to the downside, it, it would be something like this, right? And here, you know, we're almost vertical, like and this is insane. So here's, here's the setup that I want you to look for. And I'm going to repeat this many times over the next hour. I really want it to, to, to stick with you. So when we can say we have a trend lower, right? So remember those, those pivots, right? Lower highs, lower lows. And then you look for a significant degree of slope in the direction of your trade on that 20 period SMA. And then you sit back and you wait for the victory signals. So if we get a sell entry here, what we wanna make sure of is number one, that it's trending lower, yes. Uh, we also want that slope to be a very significant degree uh, lower, right? We also want the bar that we're gonna get in on to be near the 20. We don't want it to be far away. When, when price moves away, it eventually comes back. So the further away we buy from the 20, we're risking that the trade goes against us early on, which is what we don't want, okay? So what we want to do is want to confirm here that it is using the 20 as resistance and then rolling back over. So the algorithm itself will do that for you with the signals. Um, all I want you to make sure of is that you have that slope that the bar, when you get that signal, is close to the 20. And then the only other thing to look for is whether there's going to be a lot of support or resistance in our way for that trade to move. So what we do is we look to our left on the chart. And if you see nothing but blank space, that's great. That means there isn't any prior activity there. So there probably isn't 
any support to prevent this from going lower. Now you have to look further back, obviously, you're not just gonna look like this. And that's why I would encourage you to use multiple time frames as well, right? We're going to, um, from the daily, we're gonna look at that time period. And you know, you're usually looking at, at the, uh, at the most recent activity, you're usually looking right here. Oh, look at this, we have a sell signal right now, a potential entry here. So if we're now going to go to our weekly chart, right, we can look at where we are on the weekly chart right here. Now, okay, you want to make sure if you're using multiple time frames, uh, that all three time frames are aligned. So if we're getting a short setup on the daily you want to make sure that price is below the 20 on the weekly and the monthly okay but i was talking about uh, looking for support so you want to look back and you want to see if there's a lot of activity there or not and if there is not uh then we have a clear path lower the reason why we want to look for activity is is this for example when this was dropping here right there was all this activity here. And if we go further back, you see there was more at that same level. And further back, there's probably even more. The more activity there is, the more likely it is that it will stall there and go sideways again until it works through that support. And then potentially it'll continue its way lower. But we want to look for areas like that so we can measure how much room there is for that that stock or that index or that futures contract or that forex pair to move to that next target okay and if there's a enough room for us to make a, a significant profit then we want to take that trade okay so as i go through examples what i want you to focus on are the setups that happen where there is slope okay on the 20 period moving average now i know sure hindsight's 2020 we're going to be looking back but it's just as an example to show you the difference between taking one when um, the 20 is flat versus sloping. And here's the reason why we really want to avoid the flat areas. A lot of times when uh, stocks move sideways, right, they just chop around. At the very start of that consolidation area, it's very difficult to tell that it's about to do that, right? For example, here, you know, it was moving up, pulled back, held support, moved up again, pulled back, held support, moved up again, pulled back. So what would we think at that point? Slope is higher. Trend is there. It looks great. If we had a buy signal, we're going to buy thinking it's going to go higher. Instead, it doesn't. It starts to chop. So it's very difficult to know when it's going to happen. But once that 20 starts going flat, you know you're in a channel. And that's where most traders lose their money because they get in, they get stopped out, get in, get stopped out. We want to avoid those consolidation areas. We want to only focus on the strongest areas of trend because when there is a strong move one way or the other, it's for a reason. We may not know why, right? Millions of people around the world trade in it. It could be one big firm with one huge position that they're trying to get out of. There could be a reason like back when the pandemic started, right? The world went on lockdown, everything started selling off. That's kind of an obvious one everyone knows. But you know at that point there's a ton of selling, right? And, and that's what you want to go with. You want to ride that wave, okay? Let's start looking at a few examples. So Henny wants to look at the SPY. Please, if you're typing in a symbol and there's a specific time frame you want to look at, let me know. If not, I'll try to bounce around and show you um, uh, some different uh, time per periods. Now, one thing I want you to remember is when you're looking for trade uh, ideas, uh, you want to look at how clean or how choppy a chart is, okay? When there is a very, very strong trend, like there was back in here, what you'll notice is that everything is very consistent, meaning you have a, just a nice move higher, a nice grind higher. But if you look at the actual price bars, they're very similar in, in width from, from low to high, right? Each candle is very similar in range along that path. When things get volatile or choppy, you start seeing these odd looking candles back and forth, back and forth. 
this is a much more difficult trading environment than something like this is. So you always want to try to make things as easy on you as possible. So whenever you can, try to find stocks or indexes, you know, forex pairs, whatever it is that you're trading that are in a nice consistent trend. And then you're just picking off the entries. It becomes very, very simple. Okay. But if, again, if you look, and here's the weekly chart, if you look at those areas where the 20 is more or less flat, where we're consolidating, and you look at these signals, you know, you buy here, you exit, right? You sell, you exit, you sell, you exit again. Can you really make money in there? Not much. You can maybe scalp a little here and there, but you're taking a lot of risk versus getting in here when they're slope. Okay. And look, if we, if we looked at this entry, remember those three things I, I asked you to look for? So number one, you're, you're looking for, for an entry, right? Okay. So we get a buy signal here. Then can we say there is a, uh, an uptrend, meaning higher highs, higher lows? At this point, we, we, we really couldn't. Okay. I mean, if you use the, uh, the, um, uh, the minor pivots here, you could say this higher low here. And once we break this uh, prior high here, now we have higher highs. So you, you could say that, but I would much prefer, prefer to take this signal here. At least then it's a little clear. But you're near the 20, you have slope. And when you look to your left, this was the prior high. There was nothing uh, over here to the left at all. This was the prior all-time high. So when you're moving into new all-time high territory, there's a lot of room for this to move. It's just an easy path. There's nothing standing in its way. So this signal, this signal, re-entry here, re-entry here, re-entry here, exit here. So this is how we would do it. When you find one of these ideal candidates where there's little to no overhead resistance, you have nice slope, you have a clear trend, you enter right near that 20, and then you get a re-entry. You can add to your position if, if you want, you, or you can stick with your original, but we would add, add again, add again, and then exit everything here. That simple. If you can repeat that process, you will do extremely well. So again, look at this cell here. Would we take that cell? Look, it, it sold off, right? You could have made money there. Would I have taken that cell? No way. Why? I didn't have a downtrend. There was no lower highs and lower lows. And the 20 was not sloping lower. So although this one worked out and sold off and you could have made money, if you take this same setup, let's say, Take 100 trades that are similar to that. I highly doubt, I can almost guarantee you, you will not win more than you'll lose. You'll lose more than you'll win. The, you will not make money that way longer term. The opposite is true for something like this. Okay. Odds are much higher for success than not. So you could win 80 out of the 100, 85, 90. It depends on the environment. But it works consistently. And the higher the degree of slope, the safer the trade is. You know, so look at this one here. In here, let me zoom in a little. And sorry for all these lines. We have a membership group that we meet with three times a week. And whenever I'm asked about a chart and I analyze it, I draw lines and then I leave it so that we can go back to it in future sessions and remember what we talked about. Because I, I mark entry levels and and target zones and so on. So uh, on most charts, you're going to see lines, but I'm going to leave them on there for, for, for my members. Right here's a buy. So when we think of the criteria we're looking for, right? We're looking for a trend. Has it been moving higher? Yes, it has. Can we say we have higher lows and higher highs? Yes, we can. Is there significant slope on the 20 in the direction of our trade? Yes, there is, right? Are we near the 20? Yes, we are. We look to our left. Is there anything there? Nothing but blank space, right? We're about to move into a new all-time high. And look what happens next. And if you think I'm cherry picking, I'm not. I'm going to use your symbols. And you're going to see over and over and over again that if you look for those three things over and over again, you will find trades like this. You're not going to win 100%. I can tell you that. You're not. There will be losing trades in this business 
Losing trades are a cost of doing business. Get used to it. It happens. But your job as a trader is to keep your losses as small as possible and allow your winners to run as long as possible. Now, on that point, let's say we get in here. We can and we should as often as we can follow the rules and wait for a proper exit. But when you catch a real nice runner like this, I encourage you to start taking profits along the way because we never know. There could be an announcement overnight, some, you know, negative news where we wake up in the morning and there's a gap against us, right? There's a big move against us. It happens, okay? All the more reason why you want to keep your losses as small as possible when you can. Every once in a while, you have a more sizable loss, but it doesn't wipe out your account, okay? So I encourage you to scale out along the way if you can. If you're, if you're buying one, one option contract or you know one lot of shares, then you hold it until you see the change in color. It's that simple, okay? Let's look at a few more symbols and then we'll get to uh, uh, some questions. So, uh, so now we wanted to see Tesla. Tesla is a very popular stock. So here's a good example. And this is the week, you know, with some of the lines that we drew uh, on our chart for our members. So back in here, when we saw it break below the 20 here, and it looked like below these lows here, there's a real gap in support, meaning back in here, I thought there's a real chance that Tesla could go to 20. Now you may think I'm crazy, but we've seen this over and over again. And I'll show you many other charts that have done this. Um, but the key level was this right here, the 180 level. And we said, once it breaks 180, this is where it's going next, the 100, followed by this level here at 75, followed by 20, okay? It broke 180, it did go to 100, or I think 101 basically. Then it bounced significantly. Now it's going up. So yes, it, it did not get all the way here, but now it is bumping up against uh, resistance here. So this is going to be interesting. Will it fail here and roll back over? If it does, it may take a shot at that, at that 20 after all. If it can overcome this resistance and get above it, it may take a run at the all-time highs. So Keep an eye on this. Now, here's the monthly chart. This is another reason why, why I want to show you this. When you get, and this is just, this is not, you know, uh, nothing to do with victory. This is general technical analysis. If you get a lengthy period of consolidation, okay, regardless of how, how long it is, when a stock consolidates, what you want to do is mark the highs, okay, and mark the lows of that consolidation area and monitor it. And whichever way it breaks, that's where the next trade, and that's where the next move is coming from, right? Uh, now, when it breaks, uh, as always, you wanna look to your left and see if there's resistance along the way, if it's moving higher, or if it breaks downside, you look to your left to see if there's any support coming up, right? This is very early on in Tesla, but look at this move from, what was it, uh, 2013, basically, to 2020, pretty flat uh, along the way. Once it broke, this thing just exploded, right? So if you're, you see a consolidation like this, even though, look at all these buys and sell signals, right? If you had taken these along the way, you probably would have lost money on every single one, okay? This is why I'm telling you, we do not want you to trade every single signal, okay? That's not what this is meant for. We want you to trade with slow. So, and we have a training class that goes with the indicator that we will teach you all of these little things in, in detail, in, in length. But if we're already in a buy, we don't enter here because we're still within that channel. But if we have it here, a buy, and it breaks out to the buy side, to the long side, that's when you're free to get in. Once it clears all those highs, you're free to get in. And there you go. Pulls back, it gives you a re-entry, you add more, and off you go. 
until you get a change in color and then you're out of there. And it doesn't matter that this is a monthly, the same pattern will appear on a weekly, a daily, a five minute, a one minute, it doesn't matter, right? So let's go all the way to the other extreme. Let's go to a one minute chart here. Okay. What are we looking for? We're looking for, for, for similar uh, trade ideas. Do we want to trade in here? No, we do not, right? It's a choppy mess, first of all, right? And not a lot of slope. Do we want to trade in here? Absolutely, we do, right? So when you get a sell signal, you look to your left. If there's a lot of resistance there, no, our support, sorry, we, we skip it. But if there, if there isn't, right, then we want to take that trade and off we go, right? That's as simple as it gets. Let's look at a few more examples. Amazon. And, and um, before we're, we're, we're out of time, I will look at, uh, you know, some Forex and futures and crypto, et cetera, just to, to show you how, how similar it is on, you know, across the board, across the sectors. This is Amazon on a one minute, okay? One minute. So there's going to be days that are completely quiet and completely flat and ugly. And you'd be much better off going golfing right here. Okay. Complete waste of time. And, and this is the, the other thing. Imagine if this was a daily chart, you know, and this was many weeks and months of, of sideways action. We've seen that before. You know, even if you're just going to buy and hold and wait for it to get, it's dead money. Your money's not earning you anything. You do not want to trade or be invested in areas like this. You want to avoid them completely. Okay. But you do want to mark the lows and mark the highs and wait for a break. Okay. So if I mark the series of lows here, let's put it here. Okay. You can see that once it broke, right? came back to retest more than once, eventually broke down, right? And here's another tip. The length of the channel, if you measure that, you usually get a similar size move in whatever direction it breaks out of. So if I look at the length of this red line that I drew, okay? And I, I draw a similar line in, in, uh, in this direction, right? So... Here, let me squeeze the chart in a little so we can see it, right? I draw a line here to that bottom. Aren't they similar in length, right? Kind of eerie. I, I, I've done this over and over and over again, thousands and thousands of examples. It is very accurate. It's not perfect. It's not 100% going to be like that every time. But the length of the channel will give you an idea of the size of move that's, that's coming. So you can prepare yourself and, 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 uh, and try to play it um, that, that easy. Let's see. Uh, Elise says, uh, can you switch from bars to candlesticks? I, absolutely. Here's the why I use open, high, low, close bars. I can switch to candlesticks, not a problem. But because we color the bars all the same when we're in a trade, the candlesticks aren't really a, a, a benefit meaning I can't really tell whether this is the close or this is the close on this candle, right? Because normally when it's red, it means it, it opened here and it closed here, right? But it could be, could be the opposite. But one thing you can do is you can go into the settings. If you prefer candlesticks, you can go into the settings of the victory um, indicator and take out the bar color, okay? Now, my my bars, I, I have them painted black, but uh, if, if you take off the bar color, you'll still have the signals, but you'll have the regular candles like you would see on any, any chart without the indicator. So you'll see green, red, green, red, et cetera, okay? So that's one way for you to use the indicator and use the candlestick uh, uh, charts if you want. Uh, what else is there? Uh, Caterpillar. Oliver was, was looking for Caterpillar. Sure. Again, if you look at, at this, and a lot of times, okay, please resist the temptation. You, you see a move like this, and I, I'm going to teach you a way to trade these anyway, just so you can, you know, if you decide not to use the victory indicator, at least 
you have some other method that you can use. But um, you see this, how, how well this worked out, this trade worked out, not a trade I would take, right? Um, and that's because the slope on the 20 was in the opposite direction. So that tells me this was not a high percentage play. It ended up being one. But again, seven times out of 10, eight times out of 10, that's not going to be the, the case. But if you prefer to try to get in as early as possible, there are two things that I need you to look at, okay? Whenever price moves from one side of the moving average to the other, and this goes for any moving average. So if you're trading with the eight EMA or you're trading with the 50 period moving, average, whatever it is, when there's a cross, okay? You want to look for one of two things to confirm that the move will continue. Okay. The first thing is when you cross, you want to look at the most recent pivot that's there. In this case, when it goes from below to above, you want to look at the most recent pivot high and you want to make sure that price clears it. It doesn't always do it in one, one bar could take several bars, right? That high could have been up here. If, if this was a straight line down, you want to make sure that it either clears that high or that it moves above and then pulls back, retest that moving average, and then bounces, okay? So there either has to be a retest, a successful retest to confirm it's going, or you have to clear a high. If neither one of those happen, it's likely going to be a failure, okay? So for example, this crosses, right? You want to look at the previous highs. Once it breaks, off it goes, right? If it didn't, if it turned around, it, you know, you, you don't want to, to, to be in there. The reason why we do this, look at this perfect example here. You have a, a nice solid trend, right? And you're playing these bounces. So you, you, I would have missed this, but I would have taken this one. I would have taken this one. Would have taken this one, okay? Would have even taken this one. Now here, it crosses below, right? So we're looking for a break of that low or a retest. It does both here. And off it goes, change in direction. And now off, off you go, right? Um, but for example, here, it moved from above to below. So we were looking for a break of the low, which, which did not happen, or a retest. So it moved below, it came back to retest it, but it was not a successful retest because it, again, it moved back above. And there's your continuation. So not only do you have a victory signal to tell you it's time to get in, you could see that the attempt to roll over failed. So now you know this is an even higher, uh, higher probability trade for you to take. Okay, so if you understand these few concepts, and again, in the training class, we're going to go through all of this stuff, and we're really going to show you how to compare one setup to the other. Because on any given night, let's say I have this one, but there's also Tesla, there's Amazon, there's Apple, all look similar, but I don't want to trade them all. I don't have enough money to, to, to spread across the board. So I want to pick one or two. How do I pick the best of the best, in other words. And that's what we're going to teach you in, in that class. All right. Um, let's see what else is there here. Uh, let's go and look at, I don't know, Etsy. Let me see if there are any other questions. So, and again, I'm stuck on the one minute, but you can see that the one minute, nothing changes. You're looking for the exact same criteria, right? You're looking for a downtrend. You're looking for a significant slope in the direction of the trade on that 20 period MA. You're looking for a bar that gives you that cell that is near the 20. And then you look to your left and you, you want to see blank space if possible or not a lot of activity, right? And off it goes, nice, easy trade, right? You get in here, you add to it, you exit. Rinse and repeat over and over again. That's all you want. So here, it turns, okay? So it gives us a buy. Do I want to buy this one? No, because the 20 is flat. So I'm not interested. Now I could say, hey, I'm going to look for a retest or 
a break of this high, right? So it gets up to that high, doesn't clear it. So I'm still waiting. Now it comes back for a retest. I'm looking, will it retest successfully, right? Look at this, I get a buy. And now I have a, at least a bit of a slope. So on, on another night when there was another setup that had better slope, right? Cleaner, chart, better slope. I might select that one over this one. But considering the fact that it, it did the successful retest of the 20 and gave me a buy signal at the same time and was starting to slope higher, I take the trade and off it goes. Okay. It comes up here. We exit. All right. You get a buy. Is this a good one to buy? Yes, it is. Even though it doesn't work out, it is. Why? We have a trend higher. We have slope on the 20. The, the candle on the entry candle is near the 20. We have all the criteria we want. We look to our left and there isn't a lot of activity overhead. So we think, okay, there's a high probability it will go up. Here's the other beautiful thing about victory is the second that it does not follow through or, or, or starts to fail, it gives you a change in color, gives you an exit. So I would have gone in somewhere up here, exited on that next day's candle, small loss. That's what you want is a small loss, okay? You get in again here, you get out. Compare the, the size of the losses to the size of the winners. That's what this is all about. It's a long-term game. And over time, the math just works in your favor. Now, when it's sold off here, do we want to go short? Right? Do we want to go short here or short here? No, we don't. Right? Why? First of all, we have a uh, slope on that 20 in the opposite direction. But then when we think of the cross from one side to the other, what are we looking for? Either a break of a low or a retest, right? We don't have either on this one or this one. This one here at, on this candle, we don't have it yet either. On this one, it breaks that low and off it goes, right? So even though we wouldn't take this because of the 20, the slope on the 20, right? Once it does clear low and victory signaling that cell, you jump on it and off it goes. So it really is that simple. Let's look at, um, uh, yeah, Sidhu says, does it work on crypto? Well, let's look at uh, something like uh, Ethereum. Uh, what is it, ETH? Yeah, let's get out of the one minute here and let's go to daily or, or weekly, et cetera. The same thing applies. Now, you may run across a, a, a chart like this and say, well, you know, boy, these signals, they don't look too good. It, it's because we're not asking you to trade these at all. Um, in here, we're looking for a solid trend. Here it is, right? So now when we go to where, where Ethereum is now, is there a trend? There's not. Can we say there's higher lows, higher highs, or lower lows, lower highs? We cannot. If, if you ever look at this and you can't decide where, what's the trend, it's probably because there isn't one. And this is where the risk comes in. If you try to trade in areas where there is no trend, you're trying to outguess the market. It's like stepping in front of a bus. You're asking to get hit. You're asking to get hurt. So don't waste your money. You've worked hard for it. Don't throw it away. Wait for a trend. Okay. Let's look at the weekly chart. Is there a trend on the weekly chart? It's a little clear, right? So now, do we take this re-entry here? Okay. Let's ask ourselves, is there a trend? Can we at least say there's higher lows and higher highs? Yes, right? Are we near the 20? Yes. Is the 20 sloping? Yes. So now it comes down to, is there a lot of resistance? When we look to our left, is there a lot of activity? It looks like we could have some room to go up to about 300 here, maybe, you know. Another tool you can use is a, a volume by price uh, indicator. And this is on most charting platforms. It has nothing to do with trading wins. Um, but this is an indicator that will show you the amount of volume that was transacted at any specific price level. Okay. So most of the volume here was transacted down here, right? And look at where we are now. And from here upward, volume gets less and less and less. So this is telling us there really isn't a lot of overhead resistance. So this looks like a decent 
trade setup on a weekly time frame. That means it could take weeks for that trade to play out, not days. Okay. So if you're going to trade this with options, you got to make sure your expiry is long enough to, to uh, take advantage of that. All right. So yeah, you want to look at um, Bitcoin, for example. Um, what is it? USD. Okay. Similar look, very similar look. If we go back to the daily, is there a clear uh, trend here on the daily? No. Right. So again, you know, if you trade on the five minute, let's say at some point in time, there will be a trend right now. There is not at all. It's doing nothing right now. So this is how you want to play it. Don't get married to a stock or a particular market. I know, for example, a lot of people are huge fans of trading Tesla, for example. Okay. It's like a cult following. They love Tesla and they will only go long and they'll stay long. Here's a little tip for you. Um, and this goes for, for anything. And I'll use one of the uh, index charts like the SPY on a longer time frame to show you, okay? Just use something simple like a moving average, all right? So if you're on the right side of a moving average, stock's going to move in that direction. If you're on the wrong side, it's going to go in the opposite direction. Meaning if it's above the 20, it tends to go higher. If it's below the 20, it tends to go lower. Okay. It's common sense. This is why if the 20 is flat, right, then chances are price is going to just go sideways as well. But a simple thing is if you love a stock, say you're, you're buying it for investment purposes, you're looking at the financials, not the technicals. You're looking at the financials and you say to yourself, I think Apple is a fantastic company. I would agree with you. Apple's a fantastic company. But if, if trading was just about fundamentals, right? Why would Apple ever have a down day? Think of that for a second. Apple has more cash on hand than the GDP of most countries out there. It's insane how financially solid that company is. They continue to be profitable, extremely profitable, right? They just came out with like 14 new products that they announced the other day. They're a fantastic company. So if it was all based on, you know, their price to book, their PE ratio, what, whatever you want to look at from a fundamental standpoint, why would... Apple ever have a down day? Why would it ever pull back? Right? But it does. So you can be invested in Apple for the long run. Do yourself a huge favor and have a hard stop with a moving average, like the 20 period moving average. So whether you're going to use victory or not, okay, if it's above that 20, you're long. The second it closes below, get out of there. All right. So if, if you, you know, for example, let's say you got in here, right? If you had gotten out when it closed below the 20 the first time, you would have kept those profits. If you waited and held on, you would have given them all back and then even more, right? So look at a chart like Peloton. We learned this lesson back in during the dot-com bubble, okay? 1999-2000, where all those new tech stocks, came out back then, the Cisco's, Intel's, you name it. And none of those companies were making money. It was all on the promise of what they would make in the future, right? And you could throw a dart at a board of symbols. And no matter what, you'd be making huge money every day at, as things moved up. Okay, this is Peloton. But back then, the, the NASDAQ 100 looked exactly the same, straight up, okay? And then pretty much it felt like overnight, everything rolled over and completely went all the way back. And we gave it all back. Most people who had a fortune, had built up a fortune, gave it all back. Had they just used a simple rule, like it closes on the other side of the 20, you get out, they would have kept all those millions and moved on. Instead, they held on, held on thinking, yeah, that tech company one day is going to make a lot of money. And you know what? Those tech companies did go on to make a lot of money, but they lost all their money that they made on on those on those shares look at peloton all the hype right when everyone was locked at home 
buying those exercise bikes and treadmills, everything was going higher. If you had exited here, you would have kept those profits. If you didn't, you gave it all back and then some. It's even lower than where it started, right? We see this over and over and over again. If you follow the victory signals, it will help you take advantage of those moves by putting the odds in your favor. So um, I, I have, uh, let's see, I have time for another symbol here. Twin2 wants to look at WMB. Sure. Let's have a look. So this is the weekly time frame. Okay. But again, look, just look, go from symbol to symbol and ask yourself, is there that criteria that we're looking for? Right. So if I take this cell here, right. Uh, do we have a clear trend lower? And excuse me, if you hear that coughing, it's actually my dog is not feeling well. Um, if you see uh, th this cell signal here, Okay, let me let me zoom in a little so you can see it a little closer. Right here, you see the sell signal here. And you ask yourself, is there a clear downtrend? The answer is no. So right away, I don't want to take it, right? Um, is there slope on the 20? No, right? Uh, so there's a number of reasons not to take that, right? Now, again, if then you want to take it a step further and say, okay, well, uh, I'll look for it to clear that low, that prior low, or do a successful retest of the 20. Well, it clears that low, so we take it, and off it goes, okay? Um, if not, don't worry about it. Just wait for those opportunities where there is a trend lower, meaning lower highs, lower lows. You have slope, right? You're near the 20, and you look to your left, and there's a bunch of blank space coming up, and there's your push, right, over and over and over again. So do you want to take this by? I don't see a slope here. I, I, I don't have to overcomplicate it. I can just move on immediately. I don't have to look at prior highs or successful retests, especially, especially if you're just starting out and it doesn't, you know, it isn't very clear to you yet. Just wait for a time where there is slope. Is there slope? Yes, there is, right? Is there a lot of overhead resistance? Maybe in this case, there would have been. We probably wouldn't have taken that trade, but this is how you judge it. And believe me, there is opportunity everywhere, okay? Some days it'll be one or two, other days it'll be dozens, right? But I encourage you, all you need is one or two good ones. Um, you know, not even daily, even weekly. One or two good trades a week is all it takes. And they're everywhere. You can find them everywhere. Before I go, let me show you futures contracts, for example, crude oil. Okay? It works the exact same way. Do you want to trade in here while you're going to get chopped around no you do not ignore those signals on a breakout sure you can take it but a simpler approach is wait for a nice clean steady trend nice slope retracement you get the entry that's near the 20 you look to your left there's nothing but blank space and off it goes and you just repeat that process over and over again here's gold gold you know on a monthly We've been waiting for gold to break these highs. You know, why? Because look at where these three highs are. One here, one here, one here, and the lows. It's in a channel right now. But if it were to break out, uh, this thing could really run significantly. Okay? So keep an eye on gold for longer term. And again, you don't have to trade it off the monthly. But when you see it break, switch back to the daily, right? And, and wait for that criteria to come in. And off you go. So um, let me see. I think there's another question here. Do you evaluate the activity or supply overhang with the VRVP only, or is there other criteria? I do it one of two ways. I, I, I look at it visually. I've been staring at charts for as long as they've existed. So my eyes are trained that way. But yes, aside from that, I only look at the VRVP uh, to confirm that. There are other indicators that do similar thing. I like to keep it simple. I, I just like that one. So yeah, I prefer to use that. Um, if you're just starting out, one of the things I really encourage you to do is look at as many charts as you can. You, your eyes will get trained. You will spot charting patterns, uh, candlestick patterns, all sorts of things that you won't normally see at the beginning. So when I first started this, I used to literally 
flip through 3000 charts a day. I had a list of 3000 charts and I would go through every single one every day. Back then it would take me about four hours to do that same list today, which I don't anymore. Um, I, I, you know, I've squeezed it down considerably, but um, for me to go through that same list now would take me about 15 minutes. That's the difference. So I encourage you to do that. Now, before I let you go, and I will, uh, if there are any other questions, uh, stay on for a couple minutes and, and answer them. But um, if you go to tradingwinds.com, and wins is W I N S. Uh, I know sometimes it sounds like wind with a D, but it's not. Tradingwinds.com forward slash victory. We'd, we'd really like you to try this out. So, what we've done is put together this package. And all we're asking for is $7 for, for two full weeks. But what we're going to give you access to is this full indicator that, that you have here for TradingView. So we're going to give you immediate access to this. For TradingView, even if you're not a user, you can use a free version. You don't have to pay for, for uh, additional data or anything like that to try it out. Uh, so there's no additional cost there. It's a great platform, though, though I'm not affiliated with them, but I love using it. Um, and, and so I encourage you to try it out as well. Um, you know, again, you'll get uh, those symbol alerts on all time frames from one second to one month, even quarterly or yearly charts. You have clear entries and re entries and exits. Again, it works on stocks, futures, Forex, crypto, any stock exchange around the world. So if you're trading in India, for example, let me just show you. Uh, here are, are a few of the different stock exchanges, right? Here's the Nikkei exactly the same thing look at these trades beautiful here's the Hang Seng in Hong Kong right beautiful and you know what if you see these charts like you see the Hang Seng trending right and you say to yourself well I'm not gonna go and trade in Hong Kong I'm not gonna open an account there's an ETF for everything just look up an ETF just google ETFs for the Hong Kong exchange and you'll find it and you can trade along these patterns here's the all ordinaries in Australia right? Uh, the UK, the FTSE 100, right? The France, uh, India, right? Look at these trends going on. So it works the same everywhere. Uh, last time I told you we have, um, uh, we meet with our members three times a week. So as part of this, you're going to get a membership for the two full weeks to join us. We have Zoom calls for um, an hour at a time. Usually we stay over an hour, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. All the sessions are recorded. So if the time doesn't work for you, you can still watch it. And you can come on there, ask me any trading related question you want. It doesn't have to be with regards to victory, but we'll give you full support. We also email out daily trade ideas. So I, I do a scan and I try to find the best of the best ideas. And I mail those out daily along with a market summary. And in addition to that, for those two weeks, we're going to give you access to a full library of training courses and videos, hundreds of hours of videos. All that for just $7. You can go to tradingwinds.com forward slash victory. I think I'm out of time. Uh, Karen says this works. Yeah, this offers on trading view, but we the victory system we have programmed on trading view on Metastock and on tactical trader. Um, so I think I'm out of time. So I will turn it back to John, our host. Thank you, John, very much for having me on. If there's additional questions, I, I'd be happy to stay. But uh, thank you so much for uh, for the invite. Appreciate it. No, listen, we, we enjoyed having you. Listen, we'll give everybody out there just a minute to, if you want to drop one last question in for, for Vince. Vince, I thought this was cool as heck. Um, and I thank think you. I think the whole $7 for two week thing is like, I, again, I, I love the premise. You try it. If you like it, you stick around. If you don't, it costs you seven bucks to try exactly. it for a few weeks. Now, let me ask you a question for the two weeks for the seven dollars. They're still invited into the to the 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 weekly meetings and things like that. So you help. Okay, so this is value on top of value. Absolutely. And and if you can't make the the time, like Mondays we meet at one p.m. Eastern, mm. Wednesday at ten a.m. Eastern, and Friday at one p.m. Eastern. So okay. if those times don't work for you, but you have questions. Uh, you can email them into us. I will answer them during the session. And then immediately after the session, you'll be oh. emailed a recording. So oh, nice. You're going to get your questions answered no matter what. If you can come on with us, great. 
we have members that have been with us for almost a decade. Um, and again, we talk about all sorts of different issues going on with the markets at that time. We review dozens of charts. Our main, our main purpose is to look for vic, uh, sorry trade ideas that we can all walk away with. But mm. um, we also are there to support you in your journey with technical analysis. So whatever question you have, that's, a, that's the best platform to get it answered. Oh, I love that. So yeah. $7 gets you a part of the community for two weeks, get you access to the scanner. Uh, I mean, really, I don't know what else to say, except there's a link inside the, um, inside the webinar chat. You guys can see it. Rodrigo has been, been posting it. Uh, it's tradewinds.com slash victory. Vince Fora. That was great. Vince, by the way, mm -hmm. you are, you are just so smooth. Really? The way I just, that was, you, you hit right on the hour. Exactly. You never paused. That was a, uh, that was, that Not was great. Problem. You've done this before, obviously. Yes, so. I have. <laughs> Thank you again for having me on. It was a lot of fun. No, you. you were good. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Vince.